All right, guys. This is uh, this is camera gazing. This is the uh, the last day of the assassins, and the focus on these guys getting better with these. Um, I do really like the way that this game turned out. It was an avatar comp for us on Cursed Hollow, so there was a lot to get out of this in just playing with that with this hero, uh, and it really really turned out well, uh, with, especially with the the level of uh, good that this hero is right now. Um, I definitely suggest picking her up, getting comfortable with her kit because she can make some serious shit happen for you or anybody on your fucking team. Um, but I won't hold it here a whole lot longer. Uh, you know, the the build is is what it is. It's pretty standard for Kerrigan at this point. It seems like it's, it's solidified. And then if anything changes... Yo, know, just leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. I thought it was fucking fantastic. But let's hop into it. Let's get some learning done. The patch happened today. And as with all patches, shit got fucked up for the replay files. Here we are. I have this fantastic top bar back. But I have this now. And I can't get rid of it. The hotkey does not fucking work for some dumbass reason. And I'm, I, I can only assume it has to do with the the overlay and the fucking patch. And just... Uh, thank you, Blizzard. Anyway, this was a, a pretty good game, so we'll get into it. Um, make it happen. I really need the fucking... Hopefully the a the lot new worse than this. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, good. Everything's fine. <sighs> anyway, uh we had the Abbot to pick up about uh he was his second round pick. I got Kerrigan oh, yeah. as a Stop last pick. Which seemed really lucky for our team. Uh but Five, we four, really got some three, some two, good ass cooperation one. on these dudes. Um Anyway, we have the Abathur Cop. He actually knew exactly what he was doing. No fucking wonder it's blowing my brain out. Ugh. He knew exactly what he was doing this match, which is really, really nice for our team. Um, and we agreed, go to lanes, don't even fucking bother with it. So I went to the top lane and then um, figured that either Abathur or Brightwing would, uh, would pop up here when need be. So I can go get the Giants. Boom! Sylvana's dead instantly. Nice and easy with the Grey Mane and the Abathur hat. Our comp works stupendously um, with the Abathur because of the uh, the staying power of our tank, the dive of our Grey Mane, the duplicate, or uh, the clone of a Grey Mane or Kerrigan. Um, our healer isn't super wonderful, but she does have that global presence like right fucking now. Um, which is awesome. I am going to miss so many fucking combos this game, and I just want you to know that I was so angry, so angry at myself for doing that. Um, anyway, that was my big problem with his character. I'm not usually terrible with her. That fucking lucky ass sleep bitch. Uh, I was trying to stop the, the Sonya from rotating into the easy experience when she was coming up the first time. And this is just easy giants. Even though Grey Mane's got those two people down on the bottom lane for him, we want to get these going before the tribute. Try to hold them right around when the tribute notification comes up so that they're pushing on that bottom lane uh, when the tribute comes up. It's still... The tribute's bottom, so these aren't as valuable as they would be if the tribute was top. But at the same time, it's like, I still want to get him going. Um, Mercs are still XP. They're still going to put pressure on the lane. I don't want to take him right away because I'm waiting for that stupid tribute notification. But whatever. Just go ahead and take him so I can get the, uh, the watchtower and start helping out in the middle lane. Because all our lanes are pushed right now with the exception of top. And we really just want to fight back the pressure. That just 
Oh, he shouldn't. He should not have gotten away from that. I don't know. Uh, he didn't. I should have jumped for the Anna. But I probably would have eaten a couple tower shots too. So lucky Arthas can get it. Um, I think that that's what I was thinking immediately too. Like, holy fuck, two towers are shooting the fucking piss out of me. I'm not going for the healer. But we got an Abathur to clean that shit up. So Sonya's top. Sonya's staying top for some reason. I guess to try and combat the Abathur soak. Um, the call comes out for me to go back up there, which I don't like, but I understand, and I will, but I don't need to, because Sonya's leaving. So I'm going to stay down here with the team, uh, and try to make sure we can just stall this at the very least, so Abathur can soak with his body and get the lane a clearing. See, we're all on the same page. Nobody wants to die. We just want to keep the enemy from doing this. But our comp kind of needs to go in, and it just sidesteps to the right. Like, ugh. One of the things that I am not good at as a Kerrigan player is reading the enemy team. Uh, you kind of have to be able to do that, because some of them sidestep, like, a fuck ton. Uh, others don't. Some people just walk in a straight ass fucking line and uh, can't catch me. Right wing too good. Really, really hoping I would get that Hanzo. But ETC looks ultra dead. Don't even need to keep going in. Hanzo was looking for my butt, so I am going to use those. Jesus, team, like, just stop stealing my thunder here and killing the fucking shit out of them. Abathur already on a soak. We're going to snowball his soak into an even greater lead with these kills. Right now, we're about a level up. Um, right around. I am concerned for the bottom lane. I want to help Grey main. I think I am going to get a little bit too aggressive with this. <sighs> I, I keep pulling those combos in a straight line. I am not thinking at all about the sidestep of the enemy team, which is probably something I should be more aware of. Um, but I'm not giving them anything to even think about when I'm doing this. And there I am. I put the W on my feet right there, trying to make it to the back line, but not doing anything enough. Uh, and I miss the combo completely, which ruins a lot of my damage and sustain. And we get punished super, super fucking hard for it. Even though Abathur's still soaking in the top. Ah, that's a bummer. That is a bummer of bummers. Let's get back onto the But that is kind of to be expected. Bra Brightwing calling it out. She knew. I knew. We all actually knew. But that that's okay. Somebody had to say it, I guess. Um, Kerrigan ended up herself is not difficult I think for um, like pro and uh, high GM hero or character players wow uh, but people of, of diamond skill and below she does present a bit of a learning curve in that uh, she's got a combo you have to use two thirds of her kit in almost every engage um, and then the the remaining third of her kit, her Q, does have uh, context or difficulty in the context that it's it's used for repositioning, it's used for damage, it's used for a lot of different things. So you have to make uh, decisions regarding that. That combo itself was me hitting uh, the W at my feet. This is me with ten advantage. Wanting to kill the fucking ETC. Looks like the enemy team is just, uh... I don't, I don't know if they're agreeing on this, but the Sylvanas is... There's the Ultralisk. She's still gonna get away. Because she went super far to the right. Had I landed that combo, she would have been dead. And I even... I guessed so hard. Like, I saw her coming, it's like, okay, let's just rip the Ultralisk, let's stop it right here. I took Ultralisk, uh, specifically for e ETC and, and uh, preventing him from mosh pitting. 
which may have been the incorrect choice. But you know what? I'm okay with it because their team is going to be a lot spread out. So even if I had taken Maelstrom to go in, missing the combo yet again, even if I had taken Maelstrom to go in really hard, it probably would have only gotten one or two people with the damage. Um, and it, it's still going to equate to a lot of shields for us with this build and, and volatile power, but I just felt like uh, Ultralisk had more impact or had more utility against this team comp. So I let the Maelstrom go. We're going for the fight right now. ETC solo moshes me, but the right wing interrupt for the win. I really want to kill him. I have two charges of McHugh up because I got the free Q on ETC. I'm still looking for it. It should be easy enough, especially with the clone tanking. Boom. Nice and easy. Had the Ultra Lisk for the tower aggro if I needed it and the stun on ETC if he didn't make it out. We're going to trade this bottom fort for that middle fort though since Sylvanas is so dedicated to not doing the objective or showing up or doing anything helpful for her team. Um, so this is how you should respond to Sylvanas play. You should get ahead of the enemy team in levels and then start running their buildings down when she decides to run off and give you a numbers advantage. There we go! Uh, it looks like Sylvanas is going full on push build, and we now have a talent advantage, so fuck her and her selfish ash playstyle. Selfish fucking playstyle. Just fucking. <gasps> I'm getting mana for this tribute. This is the, the curse tribute. Our team looking in a super nice position to just fuck the enemy team's shit up right now. Um, Arthas didn't. Arthas took rune tap. I mean, I knew that Arthas took Rune Tap, but at the same time, I'm never really expecting Rune Tap or the the auto attack build. I guess it's fine. We want the Anna kill, nice and simple. Textbook gank from our team. Looking at the objective, enemy team running away hard on that four man silence. Probably would have been the time to go in if we're being honest. Uh, Ultralisk just chasing people down. And then she uses the leap to get away, even though I had that combo dead to motherfucking rights. Ugh! I sent the Ultralisk around because I wanted, I thought it was going to get to the building faster, and it just dies. <laughs> My poor baby. Uh, anyway. This is pretty standard strategy for Cursed Hollow, especially in the first curse when you can get a fucking kills and a couple kills and pressure. Um, we're just gonna knock the building down because it's easy. And then you'll see here. Ta da! Uh, that is one of the ways that Kerrigan is really, really good at clearing lanes. Her Q reset. Um, once you kill somebody, she can do it again. Ta da! That's uh, that's one of the reasons she's so good on Infernal Shrines with the, the Shrine Control. Oh my god, buddies, you can do it! Right wing teleporting in with like 10% health. Does not give a fuck. There goes ETC. Abathur died Let the curse in the bottom lane. Sad day for him. I don't want her to get away, but there's nothing I can do there because the team does want to get the lane pushed. I would like to make that call as well on the boss, so everybody is moving on up there with the exception of Avatar. Not remotely concerned about the ETC, so Lannis is just pushing out top, so if we don't have any threat of this boss stopping us, I've got Ultralisk, honestly, to push uh, anybody coming back to the top left there. And that bush, um, if they show through, nice and simple, but they're showing in middle and bottom right now. Sonya was bottom, and a middle. Sylvanas is, is still in the top lane for some reason. <laughs> like the number of times I get fucking robbed from combos this game for just dumb shit. Like who the fuck takes that talent on Sylvanas? I cannot believe. I cannot fucking believe it. Ah. Uh, anyway, um, minions. I can land combos easy on minions. You know, at least minions will die. 
<sighs> okay. Brightwing wants to do the boss. We want to do the boss as well, but I didn't want to give up middle soak. Uh, fast clearing that. Just to make sure we stay nice and far ahead. I still have Ultralisk. I'll check the bush to be the anchor there. Sylvanas on the other side. We don't have Brightwing here. And uh, the enemy team walking all over it isn't good. They are actually all up right now and is in the top lane, which we apparently did not notice. But three of us made the decision to stay away from it. So I, I think those three people made the smart decision. Uh, maybe Brightwing was thinking, hey, I'll do the Emerald win, but now Brightwing's up at the front line. ETC gets a fucking four-man mosh. Which is just through the floor. I, uh, I got my shit killed because I lost a lot of health in the mosh, but I did pull out the Ultralisk. This is me trying to move it while dead and it getting blocked by literally everything. <laughs> and the boss just slaps it. My poor Ultralisk! <laughs> uh, but as you can see, when you use the Ultralisk, it is a free combo on whoever you hit with the initial stun. Uh, Anna in that case, because fuck her. I, I played a game with that player earlier that like was a stomp and they just B-stepped in the fountain for something. It was so fucking ridiculous. Uh, personal vendettas aside, the, uh, the combo is guaranteed if you hit the Ultralisk and then do the pull. Obviously there's no sidestep attempt and the Ultralisk is going to keep wailing on your target as well, so... We need to clear out those giants. Tribute is mid top anyway. Apparently, we also need to get this camp. I am trying to jump over, but the range on Ravage is a lot shorter than it used to be, so I had to do a little bit of wiggling. Brightwing dealing with the top camp. Nice and ready to teleport in. Enemy team doesn't. They can take that boss. I don't know what the hell they are doing not doing that. I know. Fucking don't ping me. That's so strange. Like, that should be instant boss with Hanzo's build and Sylvanas? And, like, well, Sylvanas didn't build for that stuff, but... Um, they are looking at it. I am looking at them now. We are, Our whole team is looking at them now. I didn't get hit by the Hanzo arrow. And I, uh, I did not save the Ultra Disc for the Mosh Pit either. That was me jumping onto the wall to jump onto Sonya because I didn't have the range on Q to kill her. But we did it. Sylvanas thinks she's being cheeky. She gets fucking polymorphed to death. And now we can do the boss for free. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what they were doing. Like, they were on near the boss. And then Hanzo goes off and kills Avatar, who is channeling the tribute. Poor guy. Poor guy. Been killed a couple times. But he's... I mean, he's playing it right. It's... And we don't give a fuck. Like, look at the lanes. We just got the boss. We got a merc... Well, we have... A quarter of a merc camp left in the middle lane. Top lane still got a fort there. We're pushing in like it's just it's our curse. So the enemy team using that curse as some form of defense, it's not going to do much for them. Most of them died. Still missing those fucking combos. Uh, uh, uh. I still have Ultralisk ready to engage if they pop out on us here, just to make sure that my team can get that meaningful kill if it presents itself and we can continue to run it up. That was me looking for the Ultralisk. I didn't see it, so I didn't do it. I probably could have ripped it in between the uh, the keep and the well though to get it. But cooler heads prevailed. For just this reason.
I have Warlord Jalisk. Uh, I did take the uh, the Torask at level uh, 20 for basically the infinite ultra list. I don't know if the bug was fixed, but um, the ultra list you you can't recast the the stun with Torask because the the cooldown never cycles back. Uh, if the Ultra Lisk is alive, because it's only the initial cast of the ability. Which is annoying. So I probably won't ever take this down again, because I, I don't think it works that way. Uh, and, to be honest with you, the most important part of the Ultra Lisk is for him to be able to to engage. Uh, do that, that opening stun, that long range, like, fuck your shit up kind of stun. I'm going to put him in the bush to anchor it, just to make sure they're not coming over here. Nice and easy. He's dead, but he's coming back. And we should be pushing with the boss right now. Just nice, plain, simple. Brightwing going to get the mercs in the bottom lane. We have absolutely nothing to lose, or everything to lose at this point, I guess. If we don't get over here. But... Anna seems pretty committed. That was me hitting my W and not getting it for some reason, but getting the pull. And that's the Ultralisk dance, in case you've never seen it before. Poor ETC. Trying to make plays, just couldn't do it. Boss is gonna run this fucking keep down. And Abathur is dealing with the possessed catapults in the middle lane. We just don't give a single solitary fuck about anything that the enemy team is doing. Not, not. And this is GG. Because we were able to get aggressive where it mattered, and uh, we're much, much, much better prepared with our, our team comp. Uh, our Abathur cop just like fucking steamrolled their shit. Ugh. I mean, in case you you didn't notice, he soaked so much for our team while we just kind of fucked around and did nothing. Um, well, not nothing, but I mean, you you get it. We went to the tribute. We we were a four man. We were a death ball. Uh, with Brightwing able to teleport in while she's soaking the off lane too. Like we got so far ahead. This is such a good comp. Uh, in comparison to theirs. They had this, like, boss pressure comp that they didn't even try. Sylvanas' build is super selfish and completely threw away um, any assistance she could have given her team with that kind of pressure. Uh, and then ETZ, poor man, he didn't even get prog rock done. Uh, Sonya took... That's a weird, that's a weird build. I mean, you can build that. I don't know why you would build that, but you can't build that. Uh, and Anna didn't finish her level 1 quest either. Sucks. Our team was fucking on top of it. Uh, awesome builds from everybody. Even Arthas with his auto attack build. N not even remotely concerned about the effectiveness of it there. Um, yeah, so... Wait a minute. What? What? This is not my team. <laughs> this is my team. Okay. Re the replace. The replace. Uh, anyway, that was uh, that's the final standings. Looks like Greymane. Of course, Greymane did the most damage because he's fucking Greymane. He had a, a fuck ton of um, Wiz and Duelist stacks too. Our team was just on top of those fucking kills, just laying people out. Um, we did, we did okay in damage. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Without Maelstrom, Kerrigan's damage does fall off. But wow, I wonder, because Ultralisk isn't unstoppable. That probably wouldn't have done anything to stop ETC's mosh pit anyway. It would have just popped out, ran into his stun, and stopped. That's probably not a good counter for ETC. Now that I think about it, I probably won't ever do that in the future. Um, but anyway, uh, more to the the point of what we were doing with Kerrigan in this instance. Uh, a lot of miscombos. 
So really paying attention to where these combos are going, how enemies are dodging, and uh, where are the E goes. The W is fine, uh, as long as it's between you and the enemy, but your E needs to pull them in the direction of your W. So if someone sidesteps it, you got to have the E pointed in the direction of their sidestep to get them back. So it's still doable, it just becomes um, more of your own skill required to make those determinations. And then, obviously, knowing when to use your Q, what to jump to, how to get to places. Um, I'm still learning that with Kerrigan, so that is something that everybody should really be taking into account when they're playing this hero, unless you're just like a god Kerrigan, you're like fucking McIntyre or any of the fucking HHE boys or any of them pro players who have ever picked this character and uh, played her since the the inception of the game because she's just like she's fun she's just absolutely fucking fun anyway um, hope you enjoyed it that was Kerrigan that is going to do it for the DPS week we're on to sports next week I'm not sure how that's going to feel but uh, let me know what you think. I, I had uh, a lot of fun in this game. This one in particular, I felt, went pretty well with the exception of all of my missed combos and uh, positioning errors. But could have been worse. Could have been worse. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and YouTubing. Uh, as always, I hope that you have yourself a nice and ultra day.